they met back on October 7th in Cleveland and the Browns beat Baltimore 12 9 in overtime in that game Mayfield threw for 342 yards and a touchdown but it's uh, really a different Ravens team different Cleveland team both of them since that game some two and a half months ago Jackson of course has taken over here in the back half of the season for the Ravens the defense is leading virtually every category we're going to see that Ravens defense on the field here to start as the kick comes to Peppers about three yards out and he stays on his feet to about the 34 yard line a nice return by Peppers give him 29 on the run back and let's bring out the rookie out of Oklahoma who's thrown for 24 touchdowns this season he actually has a chance to even break the single the rookie season record of touchdown passes if he had three today which would be a tall task against this defense he would break the mark of 26 touchdown passes that belong to Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson another big part of this story is Nick Chubb rookie running back who's going to get the first handle he darts to the left cuts back to the middle and he's got a quick six This Browns offense with the coordinator, Freddie Kitchens, who was your old tight end coach early in your career at Dallas, Tony. They have kicked it up a notch big time since he became the coordinator. Well, they're running the football really well. This Nick Chubb, who everyone talks about Mayfield. There's Freddie Kitchens. He's done an outstanding job running downhill, a trick play or two almost every half, and they're getting the ball down the field. Expect some empty formation today and get on the ball and play fast like Baker did in college. I want to see that. Second and four. They go back to Chubb. He's got a great blocker in front of him. A couple of blocks were thrown. Seitler and DeValve helped uh, create a huge open lane and it goes for 13. Well, you're going to see polars, 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 and everyone's going to come back weak side, and Chubb just follows the lead blockers, and I really think this Chubb is outstanding. I mean, really, really. Everyone knows Barkley. Chubb is that next guy, I think, in this class that if you're looking at two running backs, it's those two that stand out head and shoulders. He's just nine yards away from 1,000 now after two carries for 19. And here's a little trickery already. It's Perriman on the reverse, and he's out of bounds at about the Baltimore 42. Now, this Ravens defense of Don Martindale, the first-year defensive coordinator, number one total defense, number one fewest yards allowed per play, number one scoring defense. Michael Pierce, you see him. He was not in that first matchup against the Browns. He was injured back early October. Yeah, and that's a monster difference because he's the guy, 97, who when they want to stop the run, he's going to sit in the middle there. There's Suggs, and they just present so many issues for teams when you, they know you're passing. Look at all the people at the line of scrimmage. Quarterbacks have to try and figure out who's coming, who's not, and communicate it. Here's a second and five. Mayfield looks to the right, shrugs the shoulder, goes down the middle, and he's picked off. Right into the hands of Jimmy Smith. So the first pass attempt after three successful runs is intercepted by Jimmy Smith. Well, go ahead and watch the blitz come off the side. Baker doesn't know if he's blocked or not. And so he feels like he's got to rush the pass and he throws it to Callaway and he's covered. The little tip on the ball, but it doesn't change a whole lot. He would have thrown it a hair inside, but Smith does a great job getting his hands on Callaway. And that comes because a young quarterback just doesn't quite know he's protected on that play. Was everyone blocked or not? You kind of feel like you got to let it go. All right, out of the gun now. The Ravens' first snap. And Flag's first play comes to a halt. He had handed it off to Gus Edwards. Again, both of these teams with rookie quarterbacks and rookie running backs. Edwards of Baltimore coming on strong. Snap infraction. Offense number 67. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. So Sean Smith and crew on hand for this Vitally important game in the AFC North. And Lamar Jackson, once he took over as quarterback, coming in, of course, after Flacco suffered a hip injury, this has been an incredible run display by the Ravens the last month and a half. And they continually, each week, tweak that running game to make it difficult. Look at all the nuance. Here's the throw, and his first pass way over the head of Hurst. 
Yeah, with the six games that he has started, they have outrushed their opponent by about a thousand yards. His numbers now, they're not going to dazzle you. He had his first 200 yard passing game last Saturday night against the Chargers, but he's running for 78 yards a game and directing an offense. Yeah. It's been very potent. You're exactly right. And last week they needed it in that specific game. This would be his biggest challenge to me. Because Greg right. Williams is going to load the box and he's going to put, look at this, all these guys, the old Bear defense. We're going to put a 4 6, we'll call it, and I'll explain it in a minute, but it's going to be hard on Baltimore. Here's second and 15, and Edwards looked like he could go down for a loss, able to squeeze out three yards. And now the Ravens offensive lineup, as you see it go by you here. Hurst moves to left guard. Alex Lewis out for the fourth straight game with a shoulder injury. And Edwards, again, the rookie out of Rutgers, who has had three home starts and went over 100 in each of those games. 251! A back who did not play a single down the first five weeks of the season. Jim, there's no safety in the middle of the field back here. Everyone is down. They are not going to let them. Here comes the blitz. Third and 12. They pick it up. Side on throw. Hurst with the catch. The ball comes out. He's ruled down. He is ruled down, but a yard short of the first. That was Avery who was in on the contact. So Greg Williams is going to do this all day. You won't see this very often in the NFL. There's nobody back there. They're going to dare Lamar Jackson to throw this ball over and over again, and Baltimore's going for it, or at least pretending to draw him off sides. Fourth and a long yard to go. And they do go for it. Jackson keeps it. Jackson able to come off the first hit by Peppers and slide past him for the first down. So an early gamble by Harbaugh, and it pays off. Oh, I love it. Season on the line. He's not playing it safe. Just a simple power play. You pull guards, and you get your quarterback. And when the quarterback runs it, you get an extra guy in the run game. We could tie Montgomery's block, mm. his first block. Help give some daylight to Jackson, and he had to work his way around Peppers, and he does. So the ball at the 50, and a first down for Baltimore. Fake into the line, and Jackson going to go down the middle of the field, and he's got his tight end again. This time it's Andrews. Baker Mayfield's old teammate at Oklahoma picks up 28. They're going to fake. You see no one in the middle of the field back there. Right down the middle's Andrews. Lamar Jackson sees it before the snap. And they're going to make Baltimore throw the football. And Baltimore comes out saying, OK, we're going to keep doing it. Andrews, who had the long touchdown catch and run last week against the Chargers, went for 68 yards. Picks up 28 on that one. And Baltimore moving at the Cleveland 22. Look at that formation. Three in the backfield along with the quarterback. And it's Edwards for a couple. So the Cleveland defense. Blake Williams is the defensive play caller, the son of the head coach, Greg, and today happens to be Blake's 35th birthday. What do you expect? You've talked about this already, loading it up front, sometimes leaving the middle of the field open. Yes, yeah, and what they're going to do, when I talk about the 46 bear, you're going to see this hey, defense you, get involved where everyone's down, and they don't give up that one-yard run inside. you got to run wide against it over and over Second there. and eight. Jackson throws it away. Boy, he tucked that football under as if to hide it, well, and we, then throws it with great coverage downfield, just throws it away. Like he was going to run to the right, and then he's like, oh, no, yep. I'm going to throw it. They're trying to trick him. And we've seen enough Raven games. A little secret is just everyone tries to defend these outside runs. And you know what? When you watch him closely, Greg Williams talked about Gus Edwards just goes right through the middle on an A-gap run, right down the center for eight yards, six yards. That's what they're coming in here to stop, that play. Max has already thrown four passes, two of four. They've run it three times. Now they have a third and eight. Pass way wide of the mark. Trying to connect with John Brown, and I'll bring out the ultra-successful Justin Tucker. Well, once again, he's guarding him, he's guarding him, him, him. Nobody else. Everyone else blitzes. So you can throw it to anybody on the field, but the ball has to come out right away because they have an extra guy rushing, and you just got to be accurate. And uh, you know, those are the ones that Lamar's got to get a little better on. Just signal a slant and throw it. Speaking of accurate, the NFL's most accurate kicker all time at 90%, Justin Tucker, from 38 yards. And he 
he's done it again. Last week he missed. And there's Greg Williams visiting with his team. Just surrendering a field goal off the takeaway by the Ravens defense. So three for the Ravens on the takeaway points. Tucker about to kick off now for the second time to the Browns. It was week 17 last year. You alluded to it at the start. Similar situation for the Ravens playing to get in to the postseason. Came down to the last minute. The Bengals had nothing to play for. That was the miracle for the Bills to get in. It was. Never forget the footage of the Bills watching yeah. the end of this game in their locker room. And this was uh, what happened. It's a touchdown pass from Flacco to Wallace, and, and things were looking good for the Ravens for a moment. But then Dalton, on a fourth down play, finds Tyler Boyd, 49 yards out, the closing seconds to win it and break hearts oh, in it. Baltimore. And that one burns. And you asked him, Tracy Wilson, and you both asked him, did, did you tell your team about that? And I think he said, no, we're just coming in here. We're playing to win. We don't think about that different team. Didn't feel like he had to bring it back up again. No. He said everybody knows. And I agree. Duke Johnson's the running back. Alert, 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 alert. Hey, we gotta go back there. Hurry, hurry, stop. And they'll give it to Johnson. And he's got a gain of about four. Now, again, it was just a four-play series before the interception last time they had it, but they run, they've run the football now four times for a minimum of four yards on each carry. Yep, and that's, I think you run the ball, and then you play quick, just like this. See the empty formation? They, I think they're doing this to minimize the pressures. It's like, if we get on the ball and play fast, it's gonna be hard to pressure us, but I don't think they know Baltimore. They're blitzing, and the pass is over the head of Johnson, and we have an update. JP and Boomer in New York. Bears looking for a first round bye. You know, after a Minnesota three and out, guys, Jordan Howard's going to take this in from six yards out. They take a 7 0 lead over the Vikings. That Bears defense is giving Kirk Cousins all he can handle. Back to Jim Nance. All kinds of uh, things riding on that game while Philadelphia at the same time is playing Washington on the NFC side. Here's a third and six. Going empty. Mayfield thought about it now. Launches long. Callaway catches it. Did he get the feet down? The official says it's a catch. And Mayfield wants to hurry up to the line before anybody gets a chance to look at this. Mm. But I think it's. Well, the, did the right foot get in right here? This is what it's going to come down to. Oh, that's a catch. Did he have the catch when the foot was still planted? I, I believe think it's he did. A catch. It's 38 yards. Oh. Quick handoff to the right. And there's Johnson. The ball carrier takes a pile with him and gets the ball to about the Baltimore 30. That was some catch by Callaway. And we got a flag on the field. With that footwork by Antonio Callaway, yet another rookie who's contributing at Cleveland. 12 men on the field, defense, five yard penalty, replay first down. Here's back to that previous play. What a throw. <laughs> Over the shoulder, right foot. And I mean, I think that's in. If you, if you paused it right when the ball's touching his hands, I, I'd say his right foot was on the ground. So an enviable first and five situation now as Johnson reverses course and heads to the left. Oh, no one goes with him, so you know it's a zone. No one ran across the field. And again, going empty. Here's Mayfield going to the end zone. He's got a man open and is caught for the touchdown. That's Perriman against his old team. This was a play Freddie Kitchens every week. There's four guys on that side of the field. So what Baker does, he looks for the one guy that they are not accounting for, and Perriman runs right through the defense. And you see flat-footed right there was Jefferson. He's just standing, and it's a perfect throw timing by Baker. Touchdown pass number 25 of his season, within one of tying the all-time rookie record. And how about Perriman as the extra point is good by Greg Joseph. How sweet is that for him? Drafted in the first round by Baltimore. They gave up on him. Touchdown last week, another one this week. 
Pretty impressive how Mayfield reacted to throwing an interception with his first pass. He comes back 38 yards to Callaway, then 28 yards to Perriman for the touchdown, which gives him now a touchdown pass in all 13 games he has started this year. You have to understand that's not, I mean, rookies don't do that. And we showed you earlier he had 24 touchdowns, and he had Peyton Manning at 26, Russell Wilson right around there at 25. It's hard for rookies to throw touchdowns because every week you're getting a little bit different. You're learning on the fly. To do that means you have a rare gift. Short kick. Moore gets past a few Browns and gets it just across the 30. Yes, he is in uh, some pretty rare company. It's 26 apiece. Peyton and Russell Wilson. They started throughout the entire season. Of course, Mayfield did not begin the year. Tyrod Taylor was the starter. And, and you know, the thing is, Peyton probably had 25 interceptions that year. But you're supposed to make mistakes mm -hmm. when you're young. It's hard, though, to throw a lot of touchdowns because you don't know coverages. You don't know what beats what on your offensive system that beats the defensive coverages. So it's really just instincts. And so you're seeing this kid has high-level instincts by that. A lot like those guys. That's a great sign for Cleveland. Here's Jackson's toss over to Crabtree. Hanging out on the sideline, and he's bumped out by Schobert and others. But a good pickup to start this drive. Gain of seven. And a lot of passes by Baltimore to open this game, and it's because of what Greg Williams is doing defensively. They're going to make this game be won by Lamar Jackson. Now, they'll get a run here and there, but it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough sledding. And I think you got to remember, this offense, in a lot of ways, is built like Colin Kaepernick. Greg Roman designs a lot of these runs. And they're, they're doing, Baltimore's running it like San Francisco did with Colin yeah. Kaepernick. And what you find is, who is in that division going against them? Greg Williams. Yeah, he was the defensive coordinator at the then St. Louis Rams. As Jackson's able to get away from a sack and tuck it under and take off. What a run. That could have been a loss on the play. Instead, 27-yard scramble by Jackson. Watch him step up right here when he's about to get hit. And then Jackson takes off and uses that rare gift that not many people have. And ooh, don't need to go back in the bounds. Just run out of bounds right there, Lamar. These guys are big and fast, too. But what a play. I mean, that's drop back to pass, then take off and run. That's going to be how he's going to get some of his runs in this game. So they did mark it the accurate place where he stepped out. So it's a 24-yard pickup from the 38. And that's Edwards, who likes to go right down the middle of the field. North-south runner between the guards. So again, the Ravens with a win. Wouldn't matter what happened with Pittsburgh if the Ravens win. They take the division. They would be the four seed. And Pittsburgh would be out of the playoffs. Pittsburgh... Well, the Steelers need to beat Cincinnati, which most figure they'll find a way to do that today, even without Antonio Brown, by the way, who's inactive. And they'll need hey. Cleveland to help their cause and hey, knock out the Ravens. Down. That would put the Steelers then into the postseason as a division winner in the fourth seed. Here's a second and eight. Pass too low for Willie Sneed. So now third and long coming up for Baltimore, which faced a lot of third and eights last week. And they hadn't been very good. That's the way that you can beat Baltimore. If you're able to slow down the run, they're not very good on third and longs. However, last week, Jackson made some of his best throws against the Chargers. And that really was the difference in that game. Everything else was a really tight, contested game. Both sides, that played a role. We'll see if it continues today right here. Time Montgomery into the lineup for the Ravens. The former Packer into pass protect. And that pass is dropped, but it... Brings out a flag. Body Calhoun on the coverage. Sneed was the receiver. Front to the pass. Holding. Defense number 22. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. So it was on Peppers trying to defend on Andrews. And he holds him. It's just a clear out route to throw a slant behind him. And he doesn't need to do that because even if he catches it on third and eight, he's only going to get four or five yards. Instead, of course, with it, the automatic first down and the ball placed at the 31 of Cleveland. Kenny Dixon now, number 30. He's a dangerous runner, flanking the quarterback out of the shotgun. Look at how many guys are down in the box. Just a ton for Cleveland. 
Running play, met right at the line of scrimmage. Dixon maybe picked up a foot. Schobert plugged the hole for the Browns' defense. So you see this right here. It's really hard just to say, hey, we're just going to run the ball right down inside. So everything's going to have to bounce wide. And when you do that then, if they have an extra guy, which is Cleveland going to try and do that the entire game, you are going to give up throws. But you're going to make it hard on what Baltimore's been doing to everybody else on these on some of these runs inside. Yeah, everybody's been gashing them. And they're going to try to take that away and say, Lamar Jackson, go ahead, throw and beat us. Second and nine. And he throws it. That's Andrews with a defender on his back for a gain of about five. Mitchell was the one holding on to him. And again, a third down situation. Third and four on the way for Baltimore. The Ravens who entered the day with uh, a possibility of being the two seed, three seed, four seed, or the six seed, or no playoffs at all. All kinds, of course, some of that's worked out as far as seeding from the early games with the Patriots and Texans. But on a look at this one, that's Jackson to the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, they were able to expose it that time. What a fantastic job by Lamar Jackson. This is, it's a fake, but he's gonna keep it up the middle, but here's the best part. He fakes out the guy who's supposed to take the quarterback, which is the safety, Randall, for Cleveland. You got one job, Randall, it's the quarterback, and he went right with the running back. It should have been stopped, but great fake by Lamar Jackson. Jackson takes it 25 yards for the touchdown. Extra point by Tucker makes it 10-7. Jackson had two carries on that drive, one for 24, and the TD from 25, 10-7 Ravens. Check this out, 22 drives since the Ravens last scored an offensive touchdown against Cleveland. They had nothing but field goals in their overtime loss against the Browns earlier this year, and they did not score an offensive touchdown in the last two quarters of the second game they played last year against Cleveland. So 22 drives later is Lamar Jackson in a little mix-up and confusion oh, yeah. of how to stop the run, which you're going to diagram on the Cleveland side as Tucker now sends it back down. About a yard deep, and after a hesitation, Callaway says, why not? Let's go for it. And he's down at the 20. So on the touchdown run, the free safety has to get involved because you have an extra guy in the quarterback. So he takes the quarterback a lot of the time. The quarterback fakes a guy, and then he runs wide. But watch. On this specific play, these guys are changing responsibility because the tight end motion's over. So Jamie Collins is supposed to take the quarterback. And Randall goes to the running back, the safety. Randall wasn't wrong there. When you look at it closely, it really, I think, was Collins' job because the tight end motion's over, it exchanges responsibility. That's a lot for everyone to understand. However, that's why it's difficult hey, going seven. against Baltimore. You got to get everybody no, on the same no. page and communicating with people in motion. It's not a look that you see every week, much less, you know, once a month, once a year. Yes, know? exactly. So the run by Chubb is stuffed for a one yard loss by Michael Pierce, who we mentioned is up after missing the first game against Cleveland. Tonight on 60 Minutes presents Visit the World's Top Restaurant in Italy, Scotland's iconic whiskey makers, and hear music and stories from Sir Paul McCartney tonight only on 60 Minutes presents. Second and 11. Well, we'll see if Baltimore gets gun shy after you throw touchdowns for 40 yards. Do you keep pressure or do you like to sit back and just see? On the handoff. The draw is able to pick up a big chunk. It's Chubb, it looked like again, he was able to weave through some tiny creases and get past a few Ravens and take it for 10, so it'll be a third and one. Chubb is just, he's got patience, he's got vision, and he's got a violent running style. Nicknamed Old School. There's a chance to give it to him right here again. There he is, and they're on him quickly. They're on him right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Eric Weddle 
pro bowler who, if the Ravens win today, will get a million-dollar bonus from his contract. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why he puts us from the free safety <laughs> position. He knows it's a run. That's not his responsibility. But when you have a veteran presence like that, I remember Troy Palomalu used to do that. He's got cover two. He's got a deep wave part of the field, and he just rushes. He goes, why'd you do that? Because it was a run. He's like, coach is like, uh, okay. Okay, can't, can't argue with that. <laughs> you tackled right? him for two-yard loss on third and one. Good job. Cole quit into punt. Learns fair catch signal by Jones, who's been a good presence in the return game for Baltimore the past month and a half. 48-yard punt. Jackson back out with a lead. He only had one of the four divisions had been claimed. That was New England. We didn't know any of the six seeds. There were all kinds of possibilities. Kansas City's up 14 already on the Raiders. And that's the current look at it. As a first and 10 throw is complete. And that's Brown with the catch. Yeah, it looks like right now the way it's going, of course, you know, still too early to get up on any of the games uh, out west. But Kansas City, if it wins that game, would be the one seed. New England, the two. Houston, the three. The winner of the AFC North, again, would be the four. Baltimore or Pittsburgh. And that would put the Chargers at the five. And the winner tonight between the Colts and Titans will be the six. Second and three. That's Dixon. Dixon. All the way out to the 45, a gain of 17. Well, this is the run that you had to stop. And watch the fake here, and then he's going to go down. Everyone gets just discombobulated with the motion guy, like he could get the ball. But this is how they really get people, in my opinion, that just A-gap run right straight downhill. Oh, another 8, 10 yards. And then you start changing your defense. And that's the one you got to stop. The other ones, they sprinkle in. Back to Edwards. And he gets the carry right down the gut. He stays on his feet and takes it to the 30 of Cleveland. Three drives, all three have been taken into Cleveland territory. That one goes for 24. Another motion and another right down. Don't get confused. Look at the backers. They're all just getting a little patient. Or they get a little bit moving sideways, horizontal. And you just got to go downhill. Take that away right away. That's how Baltimore controls the clock. And gets it. That's the third rush for the Ravens. It's gone for over 20 yards here in this open quarter, which has a minute to go. Go right back to the same play, basically, with Edwards up the middle for three. Still no score in Heinz Field between the Bengals and the Steelers. You think you think that they're looking up and just looking at the score of this game if you're Pittsburgh? You know, you're just like, what's the score? I'm playing my game, but I'm up there looking. Can you imagine the fan base, though, how bizarre it has to be to be rooting for the Cleveland Browns because your entire season rests on the Browns helping you out here. I've been there before. There's so many not trying to normally before. Second and seven. Oh, and look at Dixon. He went off another big run. Again, they're able to start up right between the tackles, slide whichever way they need to, and take it for another big gain. Another run straight at you. Baltimore says we're pounding the rock right at you. Try and stop us. Into the first quarter in Baltimore. Ravens driving. I'm going to do a little Eastern Illinois math on you here, Tony. 179 yards of offense in the first quarter. I mean, you're talking on pace for you can't 716 get yards. I'm going to do the math, but it might take me a few more seconds than you just did. It, <laughs> it sounds, yes, <laughs> it sounds about 484 right. on the ground on pace. Here. 121 on the ground in the first quarter. And here we open up the second with a Jackson keep. Jackson dunks to the end zone for the touchdown. One Heisman winner watching another. Yeah, and you'll see that both guys on the left side of the line pull all the way around. So watch over here, over here. It's going to fake this way, and then you just follow right around. And there's Hurst leading the way. 
Hurst had a couple of nice blocks on that drive alone. Again, starting today for Alex Lewis. 77-yard drive, 70 of it on the ground. And we'll be back in Baltimore in 30 seconds after this for Lowe's. I mean, Lamar Jackson, just one play into the second quarter, has four carries, 59 yards, and a pair of touchdowns as he sits on the bench alongside Joe Flacco. And this is why no one wants to see this Ravens team in the playoffs. Nobody... The Chargers last week, even playing at home, couldn't move the ball. They control the clock, they run it, and they have an incredible repertoire of things to do out of that run game that look the same. And then they stop the run, and they blitz you better than anybody else. It's just, this is going to be a tough out if they get in. To think they've won five of the last six, their only loss was in overtime at, at Kansas City. Exactly, at Kansas City. Update time. JP and Boomer, take it away. Pittsburgh needs to help themselves. Well, they're not on this play. Ben Roethlisberger does not see Sean Williams, throws it right down the middle of the field. That was a great interception by Williams. He's going to take it 58 yards for the interception return touchdown. Bengals take the lead 7-0 over the Steelers. Jim, Tony, and Tracy. So the pick six with the Bengals striking first in that game. Thank you, fellas. And again, the Ravens, if the Steelers lost this game, it wouldn't matter. They would take the division. The Ravens would win it off the of Steelers' loss. Here's Mayfield giving it to Johnson. Nice piece of running for about eight. This is a... This is a monster drive, in my opinion, because if you get behind 17 to 7, you can still run the football, you can still stay balanced, and you can get up on this line of scrimmage. Baker will call it at the line. Now Baltimore has to communicate and be like, okay, and Baker decides who's pressuring or who's not. That's why you get up on the line. And then you got movement by Greg Robinson, the left tackle. Mm. False start, offense number 78, five yard penalty. Second down. You can see what they're doing, though. They get a good play like they did on first down. He gets him to the line, moves yeah. up the tempo, and goes empty. And you can throw two three-yard little passes and still move the chains on second and five, or all of a sudden you throw it three yards, and he gets two, three yards after the catch. Well, if you get behind, you don't score on this drive, and they score, and it's 24 to 7, well, you're not going to continue to run this football. And that is the worst-case scenario against this Ravens defense when they can pressure on every play. Second and seven. Running to the right with Johnson. This time, good for only one. So it'll be third and six coming up. A Cleveland team that 3-1-1 one one in the division this year. Having swept Cincinnati, which you saw just took the early lead on Pittsburgh. Having beaten the Ravens in overtime. Having tied the Steelers week one. Losing to the Steelers in the rematch game at Pittsburgh. Back to that same motion they scored the touchdown on. Four guys on top, one on the bottom. Mayfield's going to the right. He's got Callaway. Over the shoulder catch for a first down. Near midfield, goes for 19. He beat Brandon Carr. Well, he's one on one. And so the quarterback, and that's a great release by Callaway. And Carr really just protecting the slant. Make him throw the fade there. And it's just a great throw by Mayfield, but and a great read one on one over there. Basically goes no huddle here. First down. And he's setting up a little toss here to Johnson, who's good out of the backfield. And one defender fly right over the top of him. Urban. And we'll give him three for that, advancing the ball to the Baltimore side of the 50. And they get on the ball because it's like, hey, if you're going to pressure, I could see it. And they were hoping for pressure on that last screen play. Didn't get it, though. Second and seven. Rushing five. Mayfield's pass. Had to get rid of it quickly. I love that. I think that was a fantastic play. At home, it's like, oh, we just missed him. He has a guy running scot-free. There's no outlet to throw the ball. You just throw it away. Throw it at the feet. It doesn't look great. But it's a great, your coach right there, Freddie Kitchens, is going to be like, well done. That kept us in a manageable third and seven situation that we can get a first down. Don't take the sack. Chubb is back into the game. Perriman, who caught the touchdown of the first quarter, also in for this snap. Both Chubb and Duke Johnson on the field. 
for third and seven. From the pocket, Mayfield's pass a little out of reach for Landry. Young covering. And the Browns send out Colquitt. Just a little high and behind him. And you can see Landry had, had come open on the side, but really Baker didn't have a spot in the pocket to finish his throw. He got pushed, a little push from the inside. Colquitt, who was the punter for the Broncos when they won Super Bowl 53 years ago. The ball bounces at the nine, and behind the back. Oh, the Browns player was straddling the line. He was on the line. Philip Gaines. That was actually just to Burris. Burris. Touchback. The Ravens have had three drives and three scores, and here they'll go from the 20. And offense, again, they made adjustments once Flacco went on a month and a half ago. And they have done something the league has yet to figure out. Run the football at will. Jackson keeps. Not this time, no game. Harbaugh called it elegant complexity, the it, offense. It is, because there's so much stuff. Now, this is the way they're going to counter. Watch this. This is cover two. Two safeties. You usually don't stop the run with guys that far. But they're going to get these corners involved. And that's the extra guy. That's where Cleveland can get a guy to take the quarterback. The corner can now get hey, knife one. in there. And now all of a sudden, it's like, oh, look at that. Now on second down, you put that one down around the line. Second and 10, you saw Blake Williams, the son of the head coach, who's the defensive signal caller. There's Jackson's in trouble. And he's taken down with a flag thrown in to boot. Back at the 12-yard line, Coley with the hit on Jackson. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 65. 15-yard penalty, automatic goes down. Hogan Joby's going to be hit with the big penalty as he kind of reaches in the upper part of the face guard. And it is. It's, it looks like a penalty, but it's too bad for him because he pushed the pocket and really did a fantastic job until the end. It's hard when you're fighting the guy right in front of you. It was going to be a sack over there. It was going to be a sack whether you hit him in the helmet or not. And it was going to be back at about the 12-yard line. Instead, Ravens out to the 35 new set of downs. Dixon, the running back. Dixon, what a jump cut that is. A second one, two. To the pass, Schobert. Look at Dixon. Take off into the secondary and finally tripped up at about the 27. Max Williams with a great block that leads to 37 yards by Dixon. Look at the pulling. I mean, there's just so many guys pulling in misdirection everywhere for Baltimore. It's really hard to find, they call it the gap. If you run right next to the center, it's the one gap. Well, guys have gaps a lot of the time. That was some block. Woo. Oh, you're not kidding. Max Williams, and then finally, if it wasn't for the last moment, Randall being able to get a hand on him, that would have gone the distance. It's just hard because these gaps keep changing with everyone pulls, you know? Look at I'm, how many guys pulled there. Now they pull out a flag. <laughs> Ball start. See what you do. Offense number 77, <laughs> five-yard penalty. Remains first down. 166 yards rushing. Oh, gosh. Still ten and a half to go in the second quarter. We got an update. Back to New York. Chiefs want home field. Yeah, they want the number one seed, JB. Here comes Damian Williams right up the middle. Four-yard TD run. Kansas City extends their lead now 21 to nothing over the Raiders. Back to Jim Nance. Yeah, thank you, guys. You see what they did with Damian Williams this week. They gave him a new two-year contract as he stepped up big time. Taking over for the position that Kareem Hunt used to man. Here's a first and 15. Complete to more. But the Ravens putting up some, again, staggering numbers here as far as running the football. Well, look at it. You got misdirection. You got a puller going this way. You could possibly give the ball to a receiver going in motion that way. And then that's not just pull one guy. Let's pull two. Now, what Cleveland needs to do is start following the pullers. Believe me, the ball is going to go to where they go. They're still caught up in that guy motioning right here. Second and six. That's Jackson. Blocker in front. 
That's Williams again throwing a block, pushing Peppers away. Jackson basically doesn't even get touched until he's already picked up at least the first down and a couple more. And this time, the free safety, you're not going to see. He's going to come out of the middle of the field. He's the guy who's got to get Jackson. And he comes all the way out of the middle of the field, Randall, and he gets him, but it's, you know, after too many yards, this is going to be very difficult on Cleveland. There's not a lot of answers. This Baltimore team is just really good in the run game. Greg Williams thought having faced, even back to, as a high school coach years ago, the old flex bone going to clinics that Ken Hatfield used to mentor as the coach at Arkansas. He thought he had some solutions for this, but not so far as Edwards tries it off right tackle, which is a rare sight for Edwards to go anywhere other than right behind the center. <laughs> and we'll check the marker here. Holding. Offense number 87. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. So the hard part for defenses is they don't see it very often. So even though Greg may have an answer, the defense hasn't seen it. So guys get like just their eyes go to the wrong place. One linebacker looks here and then it's like, whoa, they just went right back there. And, you know, if you see it every week, your eyes don't go to the wrong place. The second week, the third week, the fourth week you go against it. But they don't see it until they play Baltimore. Maybe Seattle, but that's about it right now in the NFL. Mm. Yeah. That's the thing. It is. It's so new to everybody. It's just there's got to be an adjustment period. By the time you figure it out, it's like, okay, the game's going yeah. First and 20. William uh, Jackson takes the pass and avoids the sack, picks up two. One, one team could get a second look at him. I mean, if things kind of continue the way they're going, Kansas City well out in front and on its way, it looks like locking up the one seed and the West Division. It could be the Chargers just two weeks after playing out in L.A. coming here to take on the Ravens next week. That's huge. To be able to play against, even like going against Kansas City or the Rams, who had some unique offenses this year, if you played them once, it's a huge benefit for your team, the coaching staff, to get the tendencies down. And that's the same way with Baltimore. 53. If you've played Baltimore, it will help you tremendously. If you haven't, good luck. Second and 18. <laughs> Rushing four, setting up screen to Dixon. Dixon tripped up, nice piece of tackling that time by, by the Calhoun. Sets up a third and long, third and 16 it'll be for Baltimore. as we're halfway through the second quarter. Driving it again, 58 yards on this series. 245 total yards so far. And they eat the clock, and the quarterback has to stand there on the other side of the field every week. You watch these guys play, and it just... Every possession feels huge, because you're getting four less possessions a game. On third and 16, they go to the ground. And get about halfway of what they needed to bring out Tucker for a shortish field goal. Tucker this season has already become the first kicker in league history to make at least 30 field goals in six consecutive years. He's made 32 on the year. He's already been good today from 38. This is just 35. And the kick is good. Four drives, four scores. Is that what you're trying to do on offense? I think that works sometimes, don't you think? <laughs> Up 20 to 7 with 6-11 to go in the second quarter. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson, and all the crew in week 17. Getting ready for a fun January and a game in February to boot. February 3rd in Atlanta in Super Bowl 53. Ravens trying to get into the tournament for the first time since 2014 and win the division since, well, the first time since 2012, the year they went on to win the Super Bowl down in New Orleans in the Harbaugh Bowl. Callaway to run it out. Tripped up and tumbles. 21. Flag down. Chris Board of the Ravens feels that this is going against Cleveland, as it usually does in the return game. Uh, the returning team about to be set back about half the distance. During the return, holding number 59 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. 
Last week in the Browns win against the Bengals, there was a moment that drew a lot of attention. Baker Mayfield after a touchdown pass with a little stare down over to the Cincinnati sideline and his former head coach Hugh Jackson. <laughs> you uh, like that? I like his moxie. I like I like his confidence. I think you know he's young. He's just living out his dream right now, and it's a great time in your life. So. Greg Williams told him in practice this week on Wednesday, you don't look that accurate. And he said, you should have seen him Thursday and Friday. As Mayfield is accurate with that throw, complete to Landry. He said Thursday and Friday, he didn't miss a throw. Well, that's what you do as a head coach. You get a guy who's so competitive. And Coach Parcells, I used to have the same deal. He'd always be like, you're not getting, you're not getting many, what is it, when you go to a carnival and you get for your girlfriend. He's like, you're not getting many stuffed animals for your girlfriend, are you? And I'm like, no, no, I wasn't today. But he was making it competitive. Boy, boy, boy. He wanted to know him. Exactly. You're just, you're just kneeling him. Yeah, he's stoking him. And that's why you're going to get the best of him. 19 yards on Landry's first catch of the game. Chubb for only a yard. Yeah, he said Thursday and Friday in practice, you said, you think it was a stare down last week? He said <laughs> every throw in practice. Everyone, and you know what's funny? He says he looked, he looked right over. He looked over at me like, "Greg, I, yeah. I'm, I just told you we were going to kick your butt today." As if the defense is completely against the offense, and they are. When you're at practice every day, it's like you look at all those defensive guys, and Greg's a part of them that day. And then you become the head coach, and we're all in this together on some of Second and ten. They need to put something together as the Ravens responded off the Cleveland touchdown in the first quarter and it's been all Baltimore since that time and look at the Ravens defense get a tackle behind a line of scrimmage on Chubb that's Darius Smith who's coming on strong second half of the season making big plays this is where it gets tough against this Baltimore you're on the road this is where they need a little Baker Mayfield magic because Baltimore's going to make it difficult on third down, on second down when they know you're passing and when they know they're up two scores. Got to block him up with the tight end and the running back. If you don't chip with this guy and block him, it's going to be hard. Third and 11. Good protection, tough throw, and it is intercepted. Oh, no, the rule they complete. Jimmy Smith almost had his second pick, should have had it. It was deflected by Tavon Young up in the air. And Jimmy Smith saying, challenge it, challenge it. I made the catch. You see Young right there, get it up. Smith, does he come down? Yes, yeah, still good, still good, still good. That's got to be a pick. That's going to be a pick. That's an interception. Going on the field, the ball was intercepted by Baltimore. First down. Oh, they, they ruled on the field that's intercepted. Well, they, they, they definitely did some uh, changing of the mind. <laughs> I love when the refs look <laughs> yeah. up at the video board. We're not looking up. Let's no, we're just not talk together. But, John, look up at that video yeah, board. Not, don't, don't let just anybody tell me know. tell real quick what happened. Okay, yep, yep, it was an interception. Just don't like let anybody said. see you looking up there. <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. He was right. He yeah, did. He had it. What a play by Young to get his hand on that ball, and then Smith with an incredible interception. These corners are playing fantastic football this year for Baltimore. Yeah, it's down there. Play's over right there. Look at it. You have one official, though, right there. <laughs> so how did that get changed? That's you got a guy four feet away. That's the video board. Okay. Of course it is. Take your time. What a game for Jimmy Smith. With two picks in the first half. And now the Ravens with a short field from the 40 of Cleveland. Fake into the line, looking up top. Able to find Crabtree. A wiggle and a first down for Baltimore. Uh, just a good job moving around Lamar and then the calmness to find Crabtree and he does the rest. 
Jimmy Smith, who did not have an interception on the season, has two in the first two quarters. And you know, you come in waves. That was the one area that's like they needed to get going. They're doing everything else great. And down the middle. And Steve bouncing off the hit. Steve slashing at the five and down to the two. Well, this is great. Let's fake some stuff and just pop right behind them here. And what happens is the eyes by Cleveland get caught in the backfield. And you can't do that. Kindred. And Snead does a great job. I mean, he's been a great. I mean, he's been playing great football for this team. He does a lot for them. I really like his game. That was another long gain for Baltimore. Snead for 25 yards. Seven plays for at least 20 already in the game. First and goal. Handed off to Max Williams. <laughs> the tight end lined up as a fullback. And after a couple of stellar blocks he's had in this first half, he deserved to get his hands on the football once. Yes. Give him a chance to score, but he stopped at the line. Cleveland should have taken a timeout here. And I think Baltimore should let this go all the way to two minutes. You had 235, basically. If they're going to score in the next play, at least you have plenty of time where you can run a lot of different. You know, if you get this ball back with a minute 30, Baltimore knows you're passing. Whereas with 235, you run screen, you can run the ball, you got all your timeouts. You might use one right there, be out of it. Two minutes to go in the first half. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Two minutes to go in the first half. The Ravens have scored 17 unanswered after Cleveland led briefly. And in fact, they are just a couple of yards away from adding to the lead. With a second and goal coming up. And how about the Bengals up 10 0 coming out of the two minute warning at Heinz Field? Didn't see that one coming. No. Where's the year ago? The Bengals knew how to play the spoiler role right here. <laughs> That's exactly right. From the two. Out of the gun, keeping it. Jackson! And they say he did not get there. Would have been his third rushing touchdown. Well, once again, look at the eyes. Someone's covering him. You got to go and stay. It's just... Oh, does he get in though? No, I don't think he did. Yeah, yeah, I think he's short. Good call. Hogan Joby making sure of that coming in from the side. Timeout called by Cleveland to stop the clock at 153. That's what you were looking for on the north side of two minutes. Yeah, and it's okay doing it here. It doesn't it doesn't kill you. It's just, you know, if this was a a game where it's seven to seven or ten to seven, I'm okay going down to the two minute because you're comfortable. You know, with this game kind of going to half, if you give up a field goal. When you're down 20 to 7, you need as many possessions as possible, as many, you know, opportunities with the ball as possible, really throughout the whole game from that point on. Third and goal, a foot away. Over the top, ball came out, but he had already crossed the plane. It's going to be a touchdown. Peppers can just come on back. Jackson, who has had issues holding on to the football. But he's going to be saved by the fact here, all he had to do was break the plane, which he did right there. Oh, whoa. Did he? Did I'm he? not sure. He did pull it back in rather quickly. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And the whistle, though, stopped any run back just to play out the play. Oh, this is going to be very close, Jim. This is 100% getting reviewed, right? That right there. Where? I, oh, is it? Well, hold on. Keep this pause. Go back to that. Let's see if we can get that paused again right there at that moment. Let's see here. You see down the line there, though. Nope. Well, that's a good view if you didn't care about the line. There we go. Watch this. I'm going to pause this right now. Now look it. Wow, that is close. Right? I uh. mean, to me, that's just not quite there, is it? But, hey, well, maybe he went another inch after we froze it. We'll take a look. The call on the field has been overturned. It has been ruled a fumble and a recovery by Cleveland. They'll get the football at the seven. They say, again, this, as you know, these things go all the way back to New York. They say he did not cross the plane. 
And due to the whistle that negates what would have been a 90 some odd yard run back for a touchdown for Cleveland. We'll bring in Gene Steratore after this play. Wow, what a big, unbelievable, I mean, huge play. Cleveland has life right now. This drive can turn this thing around if they get down there. They got him on a hit on the back of the helmet. Landry, there was no one. It could have been 93 yards. Oh, my goodness. Well, they had back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. It hits him in the helmet, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. It hits him right in the face mask. Oh, that was a that was a touchdown, Jim. You called it. That was that's a heartbreaker as well. Cleveland fans already saying, well, "Why the quick whistle? Why, why yeah. don't you just let a play play itself out?" Here's a second and ten. Mayfield in trouble, able to launch it incomplete. Now I want to bring Gene Steratore real quickly in from New York on that goal line play, Gene. Go ahead, what'd you say? It is a fair question from the Cleveland fans because once that whistle is blown, the only thing we can do at that point is give Cleveland the football to spot a recovery. Uh, without a whistle, we've got a 99-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Mm. Thank you, Gene. Third and 10 coming up. Still a minute and 39 to go in the first half. Trying to do something off of what was the 11th fumble of the year by Jackson. Mayfield in the direction of Callaway. And now the Browns, who didn't take any time with it right there, will have to punt out of the end zone. Well, Eric Weddle plays the middle of the field, but he's a safety. He doesn't blitz very much, so you don't account for him. But you can't block him. This should be a slant uh, versus a hot route. Otherwise, this ball has to come out. When he blitzes, the ball has to leave your hand as a quarterback right away. Baker does a good job getting rid of it. Baltimore wins schematically. Watch out for Jones, the returner. He's dangerous. He's already had a 70-yard run back, but he's going fair catch. And the Ravens are set up at the 46. After a 39-yard punt, back in 30 after this from Farmers Insurance. Is such a strange sequence that just unfolded. It could have been 27-7, but it really could be 20 to 14. <laughs> With two of those plays. A dump ball pass across the middle to Montgomery for about nine. Yeah, you had a run back that was t negated because of a, of a whistle. And then the, the drop by Landry, his face mask, which should have gone. Timeout call by Baltimore. The Verizon halftime report coming up with all the latest scores and highlights, playoff scenarios. J.B. Phil, Nate Boomer, Coach Coward with the Verizon halftime report. I, I would have been super nervous as a Baltimore fan being like, we had an inch for a touchdown to almost put this thing, and it's not put it away, because Baker can bring him back, but your percentages are obviously off the charts. And then all of a sudden, as a Browns fan, you're like, why are we blowing the whistle? Just, you can slow play touchdowns. We can right. go look what, at those what, what's for 10 the, minutes. What's the big hurry? And there isn't any. Each team feels like a, oh, hey, gang, a gang. sequence. Second and one. And they go right back to Edwards. Plows ahead for a first down near the 35. Still outside of a minute to go. No need to panic at all. Two timeouts. There's Landry who would have loved to have turned this game with that catch. Jackson wrapped up. And that is Miles Garrett making the play. In the second year, Pro Bowler with now 13 and a half sacks on the year. Well, Stanley never leaves his stance. That's one of Garrett's easier sacks he's gonna get. Timeout called by the Ravens. Garrett, who came into the week with as many sacks as Khalil Mack of the Chicago Bears. Tied for sixth most in the league coming into week 17. Of course, uh, Super Bowl season for us is again, it's starting to draw near and this Ravens franchise, the story of Super Bowl 35 against the Giants, gave up only 152 yards to New York, a 34 to seven win for Coach Billick and the Ravens down in Tampa. And we'll be in Atlanta five weeks time. Over the top, they go! And unable to make the catch is Montgomery. Boy, that was a 
nice little touch pass that's just dropping, and Montgomery just needs to slow his body there. He just wanted to catch it and go score a touchdown. And yes, Jackson could have thrown it further, and he knows it. But I think he could have came back and caught that one. We just saw that video of the 2000 Super Bowl champions. This team's an awful lot like that one, Tony. Well, they're dominant on defense, one. number one. And I'll tell you, that 2000 team is rare, OK? Yeah. We're not, not going to put anybody up there yet. But there's the blitz. And well defended that time by Terrence Mitchell, denying John Brown. But I do think that there's rare cases in the NFL where teams come up with a new scheme or something that's a little different that gives a lot of people trouble. Seattle, everyone thought, just played cover three. It was a brand new cover three no one had seen. So you ran your cover three plays as an offense, and it didn't work. And then they had good players, so it was like, oh, years it took for people to solve that. I think Baltimore's doing a little bit of that with some of their pressure packages. And Mayfield and company will once again take over the football inside the 10 yard line 36 seconds to go and the Verizon halftime report coming up as you see coach Cower holding court he's going to be honored the week of the Super Bowl in Atlanta with the Pat Summerall Award a great fundraising event for the March of Times I don't know for sure but are you on that list of uh, <laughs> possible hey, anything recipients? that uh, can link your name with Pat Summerall is one of life's great honors that's true he was a legend I remember watching him and John Madden in the booth all those years mm -hmm. and I got to work 10 years as uh, his understudy and as his colleague on golf what a man 36 seconds to go first half you got to be careful if you're Cleveland here this is a very aggressive defense Pass threaded Callaway on the run and out of bounds. So a good gain to give them a chance to do a little something here with 29 seconds, gain of 21. Yeah, well, it's just a great job, Mayfield. Be calm. You're in the, when you're standing in that uh, end zone, you just don't feel that comfortable. You know you got to get the ball out of your hands. A great job by him having a little patience, waiting for the corner route that flattens the sideline to come open. And now you can get a little more aggressive here. Browns do have two timeouts. They pick up the blitz. This is where he's so dangerous, improvising, and passes wide and incomplete. Thrown to Johnson with Levine on the coverage. The play took eight seconds. Mayfield, seven out of 16 for 126 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. And there was nobody open until the very end. He scanned the whole field, went through every receiver and nothing, and then he tries to create. John Harbaugh telling us that Mayfield's best traits in college have transferred over to the NFL. You don't always see that. Very but true. High praise he had for the Browns rookie quarterback. Second and ten. From the pocket. Twice he thought about loading it up. Now in trouble. Goes down the middle. He's got his man. What a play. They've got the two timeouts. They should take one quickly. They do at eight seconds. That was Higgins with the catch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where do you see this play? And this is a great job by Higgins coming in the middle. But Baker wanted to throw this ball eight times. Watch him just in this pocket. He's like, okay, a little pressure. Oh, throw it. Nope. Throw it. Nope. Throw it. Nope. I got to move. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, okay, throw it. Nope. Okay, I have to. This is why Harbaugh <laughs> called him like a grease pig in the pocket. Remember that? <laughs> but he compared him. In fact, both Harbaugh and Greg Williams compared him to Fran Tarkington because you hear so much about Drew Brees being the guy that, uh, because of his uh, stature, about six one, six foot. But it's really Ooh. more if you know him from back in those days. Tarkington could create plays. It's very similar. And both the coaches pointed that out. He's looking at his hand. He hit the helmet on the throw. And they're going to try one more play. Again, they have one timeout to work with. Eight seconds. From here, it would be about 51-yard kick. And you can throw the ball in bounds. You can throw it in. The hard part is if he starts scrambling. He's got to have an internal clock to throw it out of bounds if you scramble. Flag at the line of scrimmage. And that was intended for Perriman. I'll tell you, if it's against Cleveland, which it probably is pre-snap, now that makes it a really long field goal try for Joseph. Outside, oh. defense number 29, 
Lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So make that a better try for Joseph. The ball gets spotted to 28, so 46 yards it'll be. Joseph, who kicked the 37-yard game winner in overtime back in October against the Ravens. He got signed after Zane Gonzalez was cut early in the season. He's 16 out of 18 on the year. 46-yard kick to close the half. Make it a 10-point game. Kick by Joseph. It is wide of the mark. Mayfield did a great job getting them in range. Boy, they needed that three points, too, and just... I thought that thing was going to go in that side. And just... How wide, but we got ourselves a game. Cleveland's in it. Baltimore leads it, 27 at the intermission. Halftime next. Well, Baltimore deferred at the top, so Joseph, who missed that 46-yard attempt to close out the first half, will send it down the way. Chris Moore is the returner. And he's backpedaling and will not entertain any idea of running that one out. Let's get the halftime report from Tracy. Well, Jim, as you guys mentioned, Greg Williams feels like they could be right in this game, except for that goal line play. He was extremely frustrated. He said he felt as though this has happened to them several times this year. He said he can't say what he wants to say because he doesn't want to be fined. As for adjustments, though, defensively, it starts at the point of attack tackling that will be the key offensively he said expect them to go faster and more chunk plays from Baker Jim mm -hmm. they're gonna need that thank you Tracy as you saw another replay of the goal line fumble here's a handoff no but it's a keep and he's dragged down after three the sequence of events that negated the chance for Peppers to run it all the way back for a score is the side judge raised his hand signaling touchdown basically at that point that then draws a whistle from Another member of the crew, and it's the play is over. You know, like you said in the first half, what's the big hurry to rule touchdown? You know, before you can let this thing just go ahead and play out just in case, a scenario like what we saw. Which would make this dramatically different from a score perspective, obviously. But second and eight. And Jackson plants the feet and fires it for the first down. Andrews has the catch. At the 36, gate of eight. You know what's interesting is this sometimes in high school football, you know, growing up in Wisconsin, everybody ran these type of, you know, running plays in, in this, you know, type of offense. And what you found is everybody ran a 5-2 defense. So you saw 5-D linemen. But no one runs 5-D linemen in the NFL because teams throw the ball now, right? And so I'm sitting here, I'm like, when is someone just going to come in and say, we're going to run 5-D linemen, so we got five guys right up here. And we're going to go ahead and... False start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. Makes first down. And it's almost like, well, if they're going to go bring in high school and college stuff, well, let's go do that on defense. Yeah, let's bring the old These high school, high school game plan. For years. Yeah. <laughs> Out for this, too. And so you don't see... I mean, I've still... Everyone's still got 4D linemen, or they put three in there, and I'm like, at some point, you're going to see 5D linemen, and then when they start doing that, you're going to have to throw the football. First and 15. Oh. From the 30. Edwards stacked up. He's only been tackled one time this year, Edwards, for a loss. One time out of 132 carries. That percentage of tackles for a loss is the best by any running back in the league by a mile. As he's going to come out of the game right now. He's been contained by what recent standards have been for him. Seven carries for 37, five yards a clip again. And we went into the game thinking this was going to be a little bit tougher for him, but some of the other big runs have really been good. Here's Peppers coming in on Jackson. He has to throw it away over the head of Montgomery. Peppers a fraction away from being able to get to him. Well, watch the outside part right over here. We're going to see two guys rush, and Peppers does a great job not allowing Dixon to square him up and block him. And he runs around the edge. And Jackson feels that pressure and has to get it out. Right, 
Oh, he's sprayed. 53. Alert. Third That's and 14. No, no, no. We're out. Three Cat and mouse game. No safety in the middle of the field. Here comes the blitz and the pressure. Jackson getting chased. And it's caught out of bounds by Mitchell. That was some pressure by Ogba. And the Ravens offense taken off the field after one first down picked up. What will Mayfield have up his sleeve here in the second half? Can he put up? Well, he threw 166 yards in the first half. It was the two interceptions that kind of hurt just for the, you know, the, when that happens, the feelings that they're going to, you're obviously not doing well. But they, they had some big plays there, but he had to create a couple of them. There's really only one or two designed great plays. One was a touchdown, though. There's a run back by Callaway. Somehow he got free. And what a run back it is. Callaway. Well, they have a chance now. No flags in the field. I'm like, there's always a flag. I'm looking for one myself. There's <laughs> nothing there. It's a 37 yard run back after a 53 yard punt. Tiptoes down the sideline. And the Browns have it near midfield. We're back with the Browns. First handle of the second half. And here comes the empty formation. No running back in the backfield. In motion, see who's coming. To Mayfield. Grab it and throw it. He's got Landry for the touchdown. One play and a strike. And Mayfield ties the rookie touchdown pass record. This is, yeah, I'm telling you, Freddie Kitchens, did you see the quarterback just fake pump it? So he's going to motion him. He's going to fake the ball to him. And, and, it's just like a him. straight streak. But look at the eyes and the eyes. This is really what you should watch. Watch, watch the little bobble he has. It's yeah. like he throws it, tosses it to himself. And that right there is what Baltimore kind of bid on. Almost what Baltimore does to you with all that misdirection stuff. Freddie Kitchens <laughs> designs an incredible play. And then Baker Mayfield magic right up the seam. Well, that didn't take long. 48 yards. <laughs> You're not saying the bobble was intentional, are you? It was intentional. It was it's intentional. It's a fake. Look it's at like this. Faking it to yeah, him. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> the other two started all 16 games. This is the 13th start for Mayfield. Love to see a young quarterback throw an interception, come back, throw touchdowns. That stuff not go your way. Come back. He does it. All the time. Well, how about some of the older quarterbacks as we look at the early headlines? Namely, Tom Brady. I He's still think I still think you gotta go through that team. Yep. I, I don't care what anyone says, they don't look as good. You're going through New England. Houston takes the AFC South, holding the Jags to just a field goal today. Watson with a big game, especially on the ground. Cowboys outlast the Giants. They go for two to win it. Of course, the Giant, the, the Cowboys are gonna be the four in the NFC no matter what, but they win it today anyway. And finish off a nice turnaround on their season. We saw them mid-year down at Washington lose. And who would have thought later on they'd be this good as Jackson has his pass knocked down. Ogbach in making a play. Yeah, he did. Talked about Dallas and that incredible finish to the season, and there's the AFC. Yeah, Kansas City's well on its way, up 28-3 in the third to winning the West and the one seed which would then line up New England at the two, Houston at the three, and again, the AFC South winner at the four. Baltimore leading by six here. Again, the Steelers have been kept out of the end zone. They must win. Pittsburgh must win and hope for a Cleveland victory. It's Montgomery. Back, let's get another update. Let's go back to J.P. and Boomer. Nick Foles' magic continues. Man, how about this? Six yards to Nelson Aguilar. Nick Foles, 28 to 32, 221 yards, two TDs. At one point, he had 25 in a row in this game. The Eagles now lead 17-0 over the Redskins. Simply amazing. Back to Jim Nance. <laughs> Nick Foles, this time of year. And again, they get in with a win and a Minnesota loss. And I think Minnesota's losing. Yes, they are down 10, 13 to 3. To Dixon to the 49-yard line. So right now the Eagles 
Looks like they're going to be able to take a playoff spot. Still time to go, of course, in that Minnesota-Chicago game. Vikings with a win would get in. Yes, and I think you see just another downhill run right behind Hurst. But Philly gets in with Foles. We talk about Mayfield magic. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing like Foles magic right now. I mean, it's Foles high late in the year. level magic. <laughs> because he, what did they say? He completed like 104 passes in a row today think, so I think, far? I think it's 105. I'm telling you, that's... It's unbelievable. He just comes in there and does that. This is unbelievable, too. Edwards under the secondary, down to the 32. It's just the same motion across. We've said it all game. And then he's just going to run right down the middle. This and guy runs a straight line, Tony, about as good as anybody ever see. He does a great job. He's a straight downhill runner, and he has a great little wiggle to go into either gap. He can go on either side of the center. But let's give credit to this offensive line. They're moving the middle of that line and creating those holes. I mean, this is an impressive, impressive front that Baltimore has. Three straight runs for at least 10 yards. Make it four. As Jackson takes off to the end zone and somersaults in. We got a flag Going back at the line of scrimmage. Number 87. 10-yard penalty. We play first down. So take it away on a holding call against Max Williams. Oh, my goodness. Cleveland catches a little break. But watch, he's in motion. And you'll see right here, it's a little bit of a grab there. It would not have mattered at all. That would have been a touchdown. But does he grab him right there? Just pulls Randall. And it is a good call. He holds him. Would it have mattered? No. <laughs> but it was a hold. Jackson, who has two rushing touchdowns, could have four. Well, they ran that same play. They just kept it that time. Spot foul, and it's Jackson keeping it. And collides with a couple of rounds after a gain of about three. Uh, we got a Brown down. Hogan Joby. A big collision with his teammate, I believe. And we'll step aside. Injury timeout. Back after Ogunjobi got helmet to helmet collision with his teammate Peppers. And he's been taken to the blue tent for examination. Pepper stays in on the field. It's a second and 11. Ravens at the 34. Dixon. Another big chunk. Dixon now goes over 100 with that carry on just seven attempts. Seven for 101. It's just shocking in the NFL that you can just come out and run the ball and get 10 yards. I mean, what are they averaging today? They got 243. <laughs> okay, that's on 29 attempts. <laughs> uh, that's on you, then. You do the that's about eight, eight, about eight per carry, roughly. Here's Jackson. I mean, that'll hurt the average but pick up a first down. Did you even think there's a chance right there that there's like, oh, they won't get two yards? But everyone on earth knows you're running it. It's yeah. like, it used right. to be like, oh, you got to keep them, you know, balanced. And it's just constantly pulling the left side of this line. Hurst just pulled ten times in this game, I bet, and Stanley even pulled on that one. You it's, set it downs at the 22. There he Marty is. Morningwig. Marty Morningwig and Greg Roman one. together are coming up with an incredible plan on in how this, and they just keep motioning guys back. I bet you he even motions back again. Oh, shocking. Up the middle with a gain of three for Edwards. Back to his coaching staff. And we visiting with him this week, talking to Coach Harbaugh. How fulfilling is it to come up with something that no one else is doing in the league and it's sustaining itself. You know, this is the seventh week of running it and no one's been able to solve the riddle so far. Well, and the, the hard part is they have good players. So, you know, Marty Morningwig, John Harbaugh, you know, Greg Rowe, these guys have put this together. But now you've got to start to say, they've done a lot of stuff against it. These players are dominating the line of scrimmage. And you have good, talented football players. Second and eight, Jackson. Has to take a loss of one. Hit by Peppers. Update time. Back to the studio. 
Vikings are in with the win. Yeah, a little fight here for Kirk Cousins and Stephon Diggs. Two-yard touchdown pass, 12 plays, 92 yards. They inch closer to the Bears. Bears still lead 13 to 10. 151 left in the third. Back to Jim Nance. Okay, so the Bears lead by three, but all they have to do is look up and see that the Rams are winning 38 to 10. So they're not going to be able to overtake them for the two seeds. So they've lost a little incentive as Jackson is taken down for a sack at the 26 by Jamie Collins. Same way they got off the field earlier. It's all out pressure. We call it cover zero, which means everybody has no help. And you have to get the ball out of your hands, Jackson, because they cannot block that guy. He's one extra. We got a Brown defender on the field back at the five yard line. It's Randall. which will bring things to a stop before Tucker's 44-yard attempt. Randall picked up in that trade with the Packers in the offseason. The sent last year's starter for the Browns quarterback was Sean Kaiser to Green Bay. He saw action today, and that one, the bulk of the way, as Aaron Rodgers was concussed early. So here's Tucker. He's two for two today, 38 and 35. Trying to finish off a drive that lasted over five minutes to make it a two score game again. Cook on the hold. Morgan Cox snaps it back, and the kick by Tucker. Once again, it's good. His 34th make of the year 23 14 Baltimore such a fun place to gather and right here in the heart of downtown this stadium that's one of the most raucous sites in the entire league trying to get the Ravens home and back into the postseason where they were pretty much regulars at the start of John Harbaugh's career and again trying to get back in for the first time since 14. Here's Callaway. He's had a big punt return in this game, in this half. And now the kick return out to the 35. And Tucker kind of helped mix that one up. We've got an update. JB, all yours. Pittsburgh helping themselves. Well, they finally wake up here in the second half. This is Ben Roethlisberger, wide receiver screen. Juju Smith, Schuster, 11 yards. Score tied now at 10-10. Ben goes over 5,000 yards passing. Seventh quarterback to do that in NFL history. Late in the third, Jim Nance. You just knew. You just knew this wasn't just going to go away and be an easy day. And the Steelers fans and faithful keeping an eye on that one and this one. It looked like the Ravens are up 20 to 7, about to score, and Pittsburgh was down 10-0. It's going to be an easy day. How fast it changed. Now there is one other scenario, which I hate to bring up, but if the Ravens and the Steelers both win, the Steelers could still get in tonight one way: a tie between the Titans and the Colts. <laughs> All right, there have been two ties in the league this year. Two out of 216 games, a little less than 0.04% chance if you take the odds of the season. But that would still give them some chance. You mean you're telling me so, we have a chance? <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. Okay. What was all that? What was all that one in a million talk, Jim? Second and 14. And that's over to Fells with Jefferson right on him. And Joku, their tight end, who's had some big games this year. Well, he has not been targeted. It's Fells, who's one of the backups. Listen to this place. They feel it right now. They know this season's getting close. This drive is, yep. you know, they just gave up a touchdown coming out the second half. And now, Baker, you got to do something special again, because they're going to see a lot of guys on that line of scrimmage. Pick out who's coming. Signal, tell them, or have a great play. Third and 11. They bring five. Cleveland goes deep, and Callaway was the target, but Smith, who's had a monster game, was right with him. And they'll take the Browns' offense off the field. I do love Cleveland motioning, getting into weird sets, 
It's how you throw off Baltimore. They've got to communicate because they've got such exotic pressures that you can get one that's busted once in a blue moon. And it hasn't happened very often this year, but Cleveland has done it. Tried to do it again. Baltimore was ready. Fourth punt of the day for Cole. And another fair catch. Pulled in by Cyrus Jones. 45-yard punt. Well, there's a name in this game that has ties to both Cleveland and Baltimore, the Hall of Famer, one of the great credits to the game, Ozzie Newsom, the general manager, manager and executive vice president of the Ravens. This is his last season as the GM for this team. Of course, he made the Hall of Fame, still holds the record for most receiving yards in Cleveland Browns history, their first round pick 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's built, I mean, remember his first two picks? Well, he had, he had two first-round picks, and they both <laughs> became first-ballot Hall of Famers. Jonathan Ogden and Ray Lewis. Of course, he got it. He got into the he got into the front office right after his playing career ended. He played for Cleveland '78 through '90. In '91, Art Modell said, "Hey, you're staying with this franchise," and he did. He came into the front office, and once the franchise migrated. To Baltimore and his responsibilities grew. Oh. And my goodness, what he's done to lead this franchise to two Super Bowl titles in Baltimore. He's really almost one of those rare three or four guys that come to mind right away. It's like a standard you're trying to find as an owner. That's the guy you want. That type of vision. Back down as Sneed. And and I do think he's the rare guy that I think there's two three ways and I'm not going to tell you the other two those are my secrets for you Jim okay. but one of the ways to win in the NFL and really separate yourself is your ability to evaluate talent and just watch tape and be better than others at figuring out who's going to be Fast better interference. offense number 15 blocking downfield 10 yard penalty you play second down and I really think that that's a gift of his his ability to look at tape see who's going to be good and this call is very <laughs> Very much disliked yep. here not in well the stadium. <laughs> now, you're going to hold out on me? You're not going to give me all the secrets to success? No, no, no. I, I actually have no secrets to success. Okay. Just how to win football games. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was just running a slant. They called Crabtree for blocking. Just a slant and a flat route. Back to the 12-yard line, second and 19. Another big run for Dixon. He's been averaging... About 13 yards a carry, and that goes for seven. Down to Tracy. Jim, two defensive starters in the locker room for the Browns right now. Defensive tackle Larry Ogunjobi, who we saw took the helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit with his teammate, Drew Brill Peppers. He's in the locker room being evaluated for concussion, return questionable, and free safety to Marius Randall dealing with cramps. He is probable to return, though, Jim. Okay, Anthony Zettel has come out there for the Browns in place of Ogunjobi. Whitehead in the secondary, and on third and 12, the Ravens are able to get within about a yard. There's Whitehead, I just mentioned, to come in for Randall, makes the tackle, about two yards shy of the first. And they're gonna go ahead and bring out Cook to punt. So the offensive pass interference call spoiled that series for the Ravens. Well, it was a bad call, I'll say that, but you know, there've been a lot of calls that have gone both ways this game that each side's gonna be very upset about. It's all going to come down to the last 10 minutes of all these games, most of the time anyway. Ups and downs, just got to stay level-headed and go try and win the game at the end. Here's Cook, who just recently had his 1,000th career punt. Been a good one for a long time. Off the second hop, it's Callaway. And steps out after about a five-yard run back. Seven times I had the pleasure of being down there for that game. And that great community that supports that bowl game every year. Mm, nothing like the Sun Bowl. I'll tell you, it's the, the granddaddy of them all, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what it is? I, no, think, it's I close. think I may have heard okay. that somewhere <laughs> else. First and ten. Deep ball. And it's caught! And Joku, we had just mentioned in the last you series. just called him. Where's he been? <laughs> they heard you. And he's not even that open. He's got a deep over route, like a seam. And you see standing there is Humphrey looking at the ball. 
And it's just that one guy goes and boxes out yeah. the other, and it's, it is a perfect throw. It's a basketball play. It's a basketball play. Just go ahead and box out for the rebound. And, and, and you're exactly right. Sorry, Jim, but Baker's ability to be accurate on stuff like that is really a high level. That's how he's thrown so many touchdowns this year. You know, he's got a lot to learn, a lot to go, but he's really, really accurate. That went for 42. Swings it over. Perriman collides with three of his former teammates and taken down for a loss of one or two. C.J. Mosley in on that play. Ball at the 37. Chubbs had only seven carries today, seven for 25. He's lined up behind Mayfield. And they go to him here. And Zadarius Smith able to throw him to the ground after four. Chubb has become a thousand yard rusher on the season earlier in this game. Cleveland's first since Peyton Hillis back in 2010. It's just that, like we said, when they got behind so early, it just gets hard to keep running the football when you need points and possessions. And it's kind of minimized him in this game a little bit in his strength. But here we go, third and eight. Once again, all the pressure up at the line. Is he coming or no? What a, oh, look at he's looking at him. Is he coming? No. Nope. He backs off. They rush four. Pass near the first down yardage, and he's got it. That's Higgins, who he has a good rapport with. Talking to Mayfield last night, he said, you know, we spent a lot of time earlier in the year being on the second team. We've got good chemistry. Yeah, and they do. And Baker watches. This is why it works. His feet aren't ready to throw here, and he has to get it out so fast so his player can run with it. Otherwise, Higgins isn't going to get that first down. There's so many small little plays that I look for quarterbacks to really tell their ceiling. When your feet aren't set and you got to throw it because it's the only way he can run after the catch and get the first down on third and eight on a little pass, that tells you his brain works fast. Final seconds of the third quarter. Takes to the left, goes to the right to Chubb. And look at the Ravens swarming to stop him to close out quarter number three. Michael Pierce and a whole host of Ravens, but we're heading to the fourth. And a good one's going on here in Baltimore. 15 minutes to go in regulation here. The Ravens, with a win, would take the AFC North. Cleveland driving to start the final quarter. A second and 12 with the ball at the Baltimore 24. Brown's hanging in after getting run over in the first half. As far as a ground attack by the Ravens. Mayfield in all kinds of trouble. Oh, and he takes a punishing blow back at about the 35. He could not wiggle his way out of that one, and the flag is out. Browns think it's going to be on the uh, Ravens secondary. Right through the pass, holding, defense number 29, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Called on Humphrey, who got boxed out on the long play that set him up here deep. On the throw to Njoku. Well, that's a hold. <laughs> I mean, at some point, you got to let him go. He held him for 10 yards. I think that would be a hold. <laughs> Oh, coach, he's going to look up and be like, I didn't see much. I mean, <laughs> I didn't see I, much there. He wanted to, like, go crazy, but he's like, I just, I didn't see a lot. But he's never going to completely be like, you're right. That was a good call. <laughs> Set him up in the red zone. Another empty formation. Mayfield in the red zone this year. 19 touchdowns, no picks. And that was intended for Chubb. He's got spectacular numbers in the red zone. Again, with 19 touchdown passes, no interceptions. But in talking to him last night, he felt like they've had too many breakdowns overall as a team inside the 20. Well, and they have, but like you said, their ability in the red zone, and you know, they're sixth in the league, a lot of it stems from their two reasons. One, their ability to run the football makes defenses give you run looks. Two, 
your ability for a quarterback to extend plays and create and have vision. And he has that in spades. Second and ten. Back over to Higgins and drop quickly. Nice piece of tackling, Tony Jefferson. Holds him to two. Boy, There's a they, field goal here still would be enormously helpful for Cleveland. But yeah, one score game, yeah. I, I, I think right now, though, that's, that was a screen pass to receivers thinking they're pressuring. Baltimore didn't pressure. Once Baltimore, I feel like if Baltimore sees screen, then they come back with a pressure because they're like, you don't screen twice in a row. But we'll see because they just had some success not coming after him. But oh, they're coming after him here. Look at all of them on the line. Here they come. Over the top they go. And thrown in the area if Njoku as Mayfield had to get rid of it quickly. I mean, so, Baltimore brought just about everybody. Well, if you just look at all these people, just all of them come. Just come on, everybody. Just come on. The ball has to come out. And this is where this will be interesting. If Baltimore were to get in the playoffs, they do this to a lot of teams, and it's hard to come up with a great play. Well, Tom Brady's going to give you a cadence, and then you know what he's going to do? He's going to call a screen pass outside right there. Big field goal here. Got to have it. 35 yards. Joseph. And that kick is good. Bring it down to a one-score game at 23-17. Here's what the rookie quarterbacks have done today. Mayfield 268 yards passing, two and two. Jackson with 78 yards on the ground, including a couple of rush touchdowns. And Jackson and the Ravens about to get the football back just inside 14 minutes to go. Both impressive young men, young men though, aren't they, Jim? Mm. I mean, you're really Start. just, you see their unique abilities. Well, you look at the draft and you see what Darnold is going to be. You've always been high on him yep. with the Jets. That was a, not a great day today for him, but in recent weeks, he's showing you what he's got. Here's the kick. Willie Sneed's back deep, by the way. He's not had a kick return this year, and he's going to take it at the four. Gets hit early, and he's down at the 15. There was quick contact on him. But you got to give credit to John Dorsey, right? Big time. I mean, this is as good a draft, and to bring in him, what he brought in here this year has really changed this culture around. Well, first off, how about you go and pick the first pick, Mayfield, and you're able to keep that under wraps until basically the last hours leading into the draft day. And, and then that was an upset pick. I didn't yeah, see that well, coming. Yeah, it's amazing how many times it's a great pick. I think everyone would be like, how many times have we heard a job now, but not at that time. Yeah. Here's Jackson's pass. Complete to Hurst. And he takes it all the way near midfield. Well, just watch right here. Sneed. Same thing he did earlier. Let's fake it. Browns get moving with the fake again. And there's Baltimore gashing them. Great job by Hurst finding that spot earlier. It was Willie Sneed. Boy, Hurst able to fight off a tackle like he didn't even get any contact on him. He just absorbed the hit and kept on going. That's kind of what you do. Yeah. Really mean. <laughs> People don't know that. Here's Jackson <laughs> keeping it. And he falls at the 45. Picks up six. Update time it is. J.P. and Boomer in New York. As Coach Cowher said, Chicago wants momentum. I'll tell you what, Bears came to play. Tariq Cohen, three yards out, takes it in for the touchdown. Bears extend their lead 21 to 10 over the Vikings. Eagles currently leading the Redskins 24 0. If the Bears lose and the Eagles win, they will make it to the playoffs. Jim Nance. Yeah, the Vikings in with a win, but they're down with Cleve with Chicago oh, scoring that touchdown to go up 10. That, that is, a, we need to talk about that after this play. Yeah, second and four. With toss wide of the mark. Well, it's an interesting thing if you're the Bears and you oh. end up losing. Of course, you still got Seattle, Arizona out there that could change the seating, and that's a tight game tied at 21. But you could end up, if you're the Bears, if Minnesota comes back and wins, you could end up hosting them next week at Soldier Field. It's almost one of those rare cases where it's like, okay, we're playing this team next week if we lose. Do we love this matchup? We could rest our guys. Right. We could possibly just most likely play them next week. Or we could beat them and knock them out and play some else. As a coach, do you even think that way? Mm. They do. They just don't admit it. Third and four. And it's Dixon. 
and he stretches out. He's going to be short. By the way, the Steelers have just kicked a field goal with eight and a half minutes to go to take the lead on the Bengals at 13-10. Mm, Baltimore needs to win this game. Ooh. I think Steelers are going to end up winning that game, even though they're in a dogfight, it looks like. Baltimore is going to have a, a fourth down possibility. What do you do? Check the spot on this one, Tony. First down's right on the 41. Dixon is just short. Short of it there. In fact, they may have gotten a still even a favorable marking. Well, you're going to go. across the way. Yeah, because he's down right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. If they got the first here, Cleveland might want to challenge this. Oh. I, I think that was, I don't, I don't think that was marked properly. You got to challenge this one. I mean, you can see that he was down about a foot short of the 41. His knee's down there. So A, the ball doesn't get there. B, he was down even shorter than that. And they're not gonna, they're gonna snap this. Okay. They go on with it. And Edwards takes it for five. And let's get the update on that Steelers story. Back to you, JB, in the studio. They're keeping them. Well, here it is, Jim. It's Matt McCrane, 47-yard field goal. That's the second field goal of the day for the young kicker who is making his debut for the Steelers. As you said, they take the lead now over the Bengals, 13-10. 8.35 left in regulation there. Back to Jim Nance. Okay, McCrane gets signed this week after they put Boswell on injured reserve late in the week. Second and five. Mega Edwards spinning away and driving down to the Cleveland 24. Max Williams gonna motion across for the 51st time in this game, and they're gonna hand it right down the middle. And just, there's really not a whole lot Cleveland can do, because they are getting dominated on the inside part of the line. Edwards now with 11 carries for 74 yards. They're moving in on 300 yards rushing. And the most, look, in the seven games here, the seven-game stretch is the most since the 77 Bears. They got Peppers dinged and on the bench and not anxious to come out of this game. So back to the Walter Payton-led Bears of 77. You talk about a seven-game span of dominating on the ground. Well, when you mix scheme, you mix talented players, you miss a quarterback, and you mix in-season quarterback change. It's hard to get a ton of tape. There's no off-season study on it. There's Dixon. Nice little jump cut to avoid the loss. Picks up two. Already uh, deep into field goal range here with a chance to pick this back up to a two-score game. I love what Cleveland did there. Watch this adjustment. See the D-line? Now watch before the snap. Here we go. Everyone, this is the play we're running. I'm Baltimore. I'm going to run this. Oh, they just all of a sudden went way down, condensed the line, and now all the blocking scheme that they communicated was gone. Did it again right here. Fake it this time. Jackson with pressure. Able to throw it across his body and find Andrews. Nice play by Lamar Jackson. T.J. Carey was coming after him. That's a corner blitz, and this, I mean, schematically is awesome by Greg Williams. Take away the run, blitz the quarterback on the edge, but you can't account for the quarterback being better and his ability to move outside and just create and move the chains. That's all Lamar Jackson right there. And Max, or, and Andrews knows it. That was, that was fantastic. First and goal. Right at the 10. He takes the snap one-handed. And then tumbles for about a yard. T.J. Carey, who blitzed on that last play, tripped him up on this one. And you know what? I feel so good. Let's go and snap me the ball, and I'm just going to grab it with one hand like Velcro. it's nothing. Velcro. He's really feeling the pressure, isn't he? Yeah. Two exciting young quarterbacks that are going to be tangling in this division for years to come for years now that's not a tackle that's a tight end over there and that's edwards 
And he gets stopped near the seven. It'll be third and goal, seven yards out. Baltimore doing a good job. You see Peppers come back in the game. Good Baltimore. to have him back for a critical third down mm -hmm. if you're Cleveland. And you got to, you know, right here's really this rare position where it's like they may hand this ball off. It's the, the only team in the league who might just say, we're going to hand the ball off on third down and go from the seven. Well, maybe Jackson will keep it the way he's been going. That was going to be a run. <laughs> timeout called by Baltimore. First charge timeout. Baltimore. It's been a five and a half minute drive to bring the clock down to about eight, eight minutes. And there's John Harbaugh. I want to give him credit. I think he's not underrated, okay? But there's a lot, a little bit of talk here and there about him as a coach coming back or not. And to me, I really believe he's one of the high, top end coaches in the National Football League. What he did. He told his defense and Martindale the vision that he wanted for this defense. Was, this is what I want to do. I want to do this on defense. I want to start doing this. And he went out and said, nope, do it this way. Do it this way. He deserves a ton of credit for this defensive philosophy and what they're doing this year. That was him in the offseason. And you know how much time it took to change terminology and some of this stuff to get it? And then Martindale and him did it together. It's Everyone knows about their offense and what he's done. But that... All right, somebody jump. And then on the far side, his first signal was against the Ravens, but his calls on a summit. Sean Smith now will settle it. False start. Offense number 89. Five-yard penalty. Men's third down. Just to tag your comment on Harbaugh, before this stretch of five wins in six games, you see the little bobble coming here on oh, yeah. Andrews. He did. Before that, there was all this talk that maybe Harbaugh and the Ravens would part ways. And then once he figured out this new scheme and approach last half of the season, they said, hey, we're re-signing him. We're extending him. They should. If he had gone on the market, if he's, they had part of ways, number one he would be snapped up in about two seconds. I'd hire, like if I am the team, I'd hire him. He's as good as you're going to get. I can promise you that's anywhere out there. And he's, he's thoroughly impressive. Now, for can go all the way back at the 12. It's Jackson. Take the handoff to Montgomery. He takes it to the five, and Tucker is going to attempt a fourth field goal of the day. Would like to welcome those of you who are watching Kansas City and Oakland. The Chiefs trounce the Raiders today 35-3 to lock up the AFC West and the number one seed in the playoffs coming up on the AFC side. So you're going through Kansas City is what you're telling me. Yeah, that's going to be a very difficult place to play yeah. in January. Although through the years, it hasn't always been the case. It has gone the Chiefs' way. They've had some bobbles. Yeah, they haven't had Patrick Mahomes that's right. there. Though. <laughs> and Tyreek Hill. Here's 23 yards to make it. Again, a nine-point margin. High snap. Cook did a good job getting it down. And Tucker's four for four. 7.20 to go. Got a half a quarter to go. Again, we just mentioned the Kansas City audience has joined us. The one, two, three, and five seeds are all set. We didn't have any seeds set coming into this Sunday. Now we know KC's the one. Patriots are the two. They've got first-round buys. In the Patriots' case, a ninth straight year. Houston to host a game next week against the winner of Indianapolis and Tennessee. That's tonight. And the Chargers are locked in at the five and will go against either Baltimore or Pittsburgh. Of course, I mentioned in the Pittsburgh <laughs> tie scenario, but I don't think we'll have to go back and talk about fractions on that one. But Cleveland, you got 7.20 to go. You've shown flashes here of getting your act together offensively in the second half. What do you think we're going to see here with a half a quarter? You're going to see them get an empty formation, or they should, because that's okay. all their big plays have come from something like that. And honestly, I think you got to just... Baker's going to have to, like, move around and make plays and do something... You know, a little bit unique and not for him unique, but you're, I just don't think you can just systematically go up and down the field on this Baltimore defense. You got to create big plays. And of course, let's come out and hand it off just to the right. They got to play action this with everything you got. There's your play action. They pick up the blitzer and they dump it off. 
and Joku sheds a tackle, takes it near the 40. That's a gain of third, uh, 14, brought down by Terrell Suggs, who is playing in his 229th game today and sets the Ravens franchise record. That's one more than Ray Lewis ever played. You had a visit with Ray Lewis before the game? Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of reminds me of like Jordan and Scotty a little bit, right? Where yeah. it's like, you got Ray Lewis, he's Jordan, and Suggs is Scotty, but they were both like on the dream team. And... Great job by Ndoku to make something out of that. Here's the handoff. Oh. Chubb, though, breaks the tackle. Mayfield trying to get out to throw a block that's not going to be necessary because Owasso <laughs> tackles him for a big loss. Last week's AFC Defender of the Week, Patrick Owasu had nine tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble against the Chargers. Gets a tackle for a five-yard loss. This is the drive for Baltimore right now. Look at that in this half. Shutting Cleveland's run game down completely. You do not want this game. Cleveland, you do not want to let any points go on the board on this drive. Don't make it come down to a Cincinnati miracle like last year. And now you see the four wides out of empty. They've heard them with this. Here's the snap. Mayfield goes underneath. And Joku again trying to break tackles. And he's able to get it out to about the 40. It'll set up a third down, third and eight. Do you think they're in four down territory yet? Inside six? Absolutely. You're in four down territory. Unless you're trying to catch a flight. By the way, that loss for Chubb of five yards, he lost his thousand yard season. Oh, that hurts. And he's not going to get another opportunity. <laughs> Probably not. He, he went from 1,001 to oh. 996. Oh, well, Baltimore fans, you're going to come after this guy in this, this play. You're, your seasons are getting close to being on the line. You're going to be who you are. Here come the Ravens. Mayfield's pass caught. Landry tiptoeing. And he's finally whistled out. And mark him actually back at the Baltimore 47. Just an outstanding throw. This is the corner he's looking at. He's got to stare at that guy. And to throw that ball is really a high-level decision and throw, and he was in. But that was close. Good job by Landry. No huddle for the Browns. Pass quickly. Over to Higgins. Blocker in front. Njoku blocking on Jefferson, who's able to finally fight off the block and make the tackle. They finally got the screen versus the pressure right off the edge. And you kept calling it, and what a block by Landry. And the Joku keeps it going. Uh-oh. 33 yards on the play to Higgins. And quickly they're coming. Back to the empty formation. Mayfield over 300 for the second time this year against Baltimore. He comes up, he says, they're not pressuring. Here's the thing. Come to the backfield, running back. Call a play and snap. Mayfield, draw. It's Johnson. Inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 6. So Mayfield goes over 300, a Ravens defense that has now allowed just three 300-yard games on the year as you see Johnson take it to about the six. The three, the throw for 300, Mahomes, Mayfield, Mayfield. <laughs> Some good young talent in this league at the quarterback position. And, oh, I'm telling you, just this has an eerily feel. I, I think this team's different, but I'm telling you, if they score a touchdown here, mm. Baltimore, they need to close out that game then on offense because they can't give it back to them. Second and three from the six. Mayfield's pass caught. Fighting for it down to the one is Landry. And on first and goal at the one. Just a motion across and a simple route to the sideline. But the accuracy of Mayfield, see that off his back foot and how perfect on that side Spun it pretty good, too. Yeah, and he does it so the receiver can run after catch. A lot of quarterbacks were just good quarterbacks. They throw that, and he kind of turns, right, right. or his body weight turns, and he never gets to turn the corner. A yard away. By the way, the Steelers are tied, and they're driving. They're at the 24 of the Bengals, so all kinds of things happening. Oh. AFC North up in the air as Mayfield throws to the end zone. And incomplete. It's ruled. We're going to see. That was really she close came down though. with it. I guess the body was out of bounds, they ruled. This close to the rookie touchdown pass record. Here we go. Let's see. 
Oh, he, the, well, he's, it's he's the ball. It he's the in bounds. It's if the ball is moving. It is. Yeah, he didn't have that. Oh, he, does he not? I don't think he had it. Well, he's got it pinned against his body, against his hip. Do you want to risk losing a, a timeout you might need later? Or do you trust just a second and goal you can save the, the timeout? I, I think I would lose this, so I would wait. I would not challenge this. But if you're going to take a timeout, you challenge seconds. it. Oh, they they call a timeout. If you're gonna if you're gonna call a timeout, go ahead and just ch challenge it. Well, we'll that's, that's the correct play. If you're gonna okay. don't call a timeout, obviously you're gonna yeah. challenge it. It's, it's close enough to do it. I just don't think it's gonna it's gonna be considered a touchdown. So uh, we saw the signal for a timeout first. Then he threw the challenge yeah, well, flag, and he's going to go back and say, "Well, I was trying to challenge it." Yeah. And they should give that to you. I feel like that's one of those. Yeah, I get it. I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, you don't want to lose two timeouts out of this. <laughs> it was great effort by Injoku. So far, the. The refs haven't told us anything. No, and it does not appear that it's. We're reluctant to not challenge the ruling on the field. Okay. Okay. Thirty-second timeout. Second down. Whoa. So that. So they did not issue the challenge. They just took a timeout. All right, we need to talk to Gene then, right? Gene Steratore, hey, what do you think of that? What happened? I I agree with what both of you said. If we're going to use a challenge or a timeout, you might as well challenge it to get a chance. I think it's incomplete, but if you're going to waste the timeout, get a challenge out of it. There's a touchdown throw to Callaway as Mayfield just sips it in there. It's a screen pass, and the play is made actually by Higgins. 81. Watch. I'm going to block you. No, I'm not. You don't hit them. You make them feel like you're going to pick them, and then you just make them go over the top of you, and that gets Callaway open for a simple screen. His fifth touchdown of the year, but the bigger headline is that Mayfield now owns the all-time NFL rookie record with a 27th touchdown pass. Extra point is delivered with 3.24 to go. Oh my goodness, it's gonna come down to the wire. Did you expect anything else? <laughs> nope. Mayfield takes from 75 yards and nine please to bring it down to 26-24. Talking to Jarvis Landry last night, what did he tell us about his young quarterback at the huddle key moments? He looks at us and says, we are not going to flinch. And they certainly didn't on that possession, even though maybe they thought for a moment that that was a touchdown to Njoku. And what must have happened just to clean that up is they must have gone over and said to Williams, no, you call the timeout first. So if you want to challenge it, it could cost you a second if you lose the challenge. And he just went ahead and took the timeout. Yeah. And left it at that. And it's over the head of Ty Montgomery. Well, here we go now. Lamar Jackson, all you have to do is have the fate of your team season on your shoulders as... No one knows what's going on in that Pittsburgh game or how that's going to play out. I think they're probably tied right now, but here it is. Lamar Jackson, you've ran the football. I think you stick with what you do. The problem is Cleveland made an adjustment that I loved on the last drive, reducing the front right before the snap. The D lineman starting wide and then moving down. Let's see if they do it again. Start wide, the D line, and then move down. There it is. And then you send the outside two guys, him and him. Hand off to Dixon. And with that carry, they now have 296 yards on the ground. Can this team that's been so dominant running the football, can they grind out the last three minutes and change to I win the division? I think that's why you want to be able to run the football as a head coach, because you can close games out, and it makes life easy on everybody. However, this is going to be difficult if they continue to run this front, which I think they're going to do on every play. You Not, should know what you're getting, though, so you should be able to have an answer for it. Montgomery is the running back. He gets the handle. And he's tackled down. About five yards short of first, third down on the way. And we're on our way to New York for an update.
Steelers needed this. You know, Matt McCrane showed up Friday to the Steelers. He's kicking for them today. This is his third field goal of the day, a 35-yarder. They take the lead, 16-13, over the Bengals. Under two minutes to go. Bengals have the ball. Back to you, Jim Nance. Okay, Cleveland took a timeout after that carry by Montgomery, so stopping the clock with 2.41 to go. Thank you, JB. Boomer for all the great updates today. Third and five it'll be from the 30. There's a lot of Ravens fans right now very nervous on this play because you're usually passing the ball on third and five, especially with your season on the line. You feel like they'd have to this time. The corners come up for the Browns. Here's Jackson. Oh, sloppy pitch, and Montgomery falls on it back at the 24, and Cleveland's getting the football back. That is the issue with being a running team. If they do solve with a front, it's the same look, three plays in a row. It takes away what you do. Miles Garrett made a big play. He busted up this play. We're going to come after Jackson there and force the, the panic pitch. And even with a good pitch, it wasn't going to get there. It's going nowhere. It just, it was really Cleveland's adjustment. Give Greg Williams in the last drive or two. And now, you rely on the number one defense in the league against Baker Mayfield. Who's thrown for 341 against you. Two minutes to go. Two-point game in Baltimore. You want suspense? Pittsburgh's going to win the game. They have just gotten the ball back inside of two minutes to go, holding the Bengals, turning it over on downs. So it's a kneel-down situation there. Steelers are going to win. And the Ravens punt it away with two minutes to go. Callaway fields it, 25-yard line. And he has swarmed under after about a two-yard return. Baker Mayfield trying to play the hero role to go into the offseason with a winning record for a franchise that was 0-16 just a year ago. Well, Jimmy Haslam hired John Dorsey. Great job. Dorsey picks Mayfield. Great job. And here we go. Baker Mayfield, you get the ball. Chance to send a division opponent home end their season and send the message to the world that the Browns win four in a row and we're coming in the future. They've got one timeout and 149 on the clock. Mayfield's pass thrown behind Perriman. And just to off his back foot a little bit, just doesn't get his weight through. Throws it behind Perriman. Now Baltimore was in this situation against Kansas City at the end. And if you get an end of the game situation on a fourth and nine, they didn't go all out pressure against Mahomes and he created. I think if it gets to that point, I think you're gonna see him send everybody at Baker Mayfield. Weddle backs off the blitz. Second and 10, Mayfield. Buying time, he's dangerous here, and the pass is caught by Perriman, and it's ruled a catch. Remember, we're inside two minutes, he catches it right in front of his old bench. Oh, I don't know. That right foot. The toe tap with the right foot, is it in or out? Going to let you just make that call, Jim. Go ahead <laughs> and tell you. us. <laughs> I'm going to let them give uh, this a few looks. Here's a good look right here, Tony. Catches it there. Is that right foot down when he caught it? I don't think so. He's in the air. The second foot appears to be out. I'm going to say he's in. Just okay. because you watch he's the in? right foot right here. It's, you think, I think it's it, touching? I think it does. If we go back to the view before this. That's the is it? He's got possession there. Is it the right foot down now, when he now, has possession? Yeah, slows down right here. Stop. Go back a little bit on this one. And if you look right there, go forward a second. And now he's got the ball. See that right you see toe? A kick, do you that see the right, dirt kick up? The dirt kicked up. Yep. And I really feel like that's going to be the difference because obviously at that point he doesn't get it in there the second attempt that to get the foot down off. the second attempt to get the foot down he's out but, but 
But see that right there, that right foot, does it kick up the dirt? It, it looks fractions. like it does. At what point does he have possession? Gene Steratore, what do you think? I think this is really tight, and it might be the bottom of his cleat that's putting up that puff. There's a good angle there. Remember, the ruling the was complete. The of a completed pass stands. First down. There you go. And you know, it probably is the right call because you couldn't be just not enough evidence. No, there's it, just not enough to overturn it. We did see a little bit kind of kick up, but we were not positive. That's a 19-yard game. What point did he have possession, and where's the right foot at that time? Uh, it's fractions, but it's in the books. It's a completion. And now they draw closer to field goal range off that 19-yard play. Here's Mayfield down the sideline and over the head of Landry, who wanted a flag. The entire AFC North story is going to be written in this last minute and 35 seconds. You got every Pittsburgh Steeler fan in the world doing the unthinkable right now, cheering for the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> trying to see the Browns knock out the Ravens and put Pittsburgh in the playoffs. And you got the number one pick against the number one defense who has the rookie record. And this formation for all you new people, four receivers on one side has hurt Baltimore today. We'll see here. Second and 10, they come after him. Steps away, throws. Did he catch it? Oh, what an effort by Landry. They say incomplete, it hit the ground. Landry saying, hey, challenge it. You do not want to challenge. You can't challenge it, Jarvis. You're inside two minutes. He tried to curl his hand underneath it. He might have a cause here. Watch his hand go under and then pin it against the body. Oh, my God. I think he's got a case. Oh, I think he does, too. Of course. How do you do that? You got a player on your back. of an incomplete pass is under review. They've got to look at this up top again inside two minutes. Booth review. Well, you see the hand stays under the ball. But does it get on top? Gene Steratore, now it's help us do this one. I'm going to rule catch on this when the left hand stays under. The ball does move, but he does not lose possession, in my opinion. Now, remember, we have a running clock at this point. If they overturn this to a completion, a 10-second runoff will apply. It may not be that big yet from 127 to 117, but we will have time as well. I have a catch on the play, guys. Well, as they're looking at this, we're seeing on another monitor that at Heinz Field, that game is over. The Steelers have won. No one has left the stadium. The players are on the field, and they are watching the Jumbotron and watching this game with their hopes, again, their season in the balance here, needing Cleveland to pull off the win. Again, in fact, we're gonna be able to show you this. Oh, Look at this thing live from Heinz Field. Look at everyone still in position, the fan base. And they're watching and deciding and trying to cheer for that to be a catch right there. They're like, that's a catch, that's a catch. And then you go with the Ravens, the agony of what happened a year ago. Oh, it's literally turning into the same nightmare it for them is. right now. The script's looking very similar right now. This is a tremendous effort, though, to save it by Landry. And he did. I mean, he got the hand underneath. He has the hand between the ground and the ball. He could, the only way you could say that it doesn't is because you see that ball hit that ground on that way down. So his hand's under, but the ball does right there. Like if there was no control there, but it looks like he has control. Yeah. I know one thing, when we shook hands with him last night when we walked around production, maybe, <laughs> yes. the, maybe the strongest handshake outside of Adrian Peterson I've ever seen yeah, in the league. Or my handshake, but yes, uh, yeah, you're yeah, exactly really right. Close. It really was the, really the second close. strongest that you've ever had. I tell you, he was a, he's got like his paws that just grabbed that football. They're taking a long time with us because it's so crucial. Yes. It put the Browns See, within, you know, five or six yards of a, a, of a possible field goal attempt with still plenty of time to get closer. Well, there's a monster difference, obviously, 
in field position. But it's third down and 10, or it's first and 10 as well. Yeah. And the Ravens' season, you know, we're not just trying to <laughs> build this up. It's, it's on the line. And then you got, of course, the story may come down to a Joseph field goal attempt. Oh, they're talking right here. That means they got to go back to where it was, which tells me then they may call this a catch. They're like, how much time was on the clock? Where's it going back to? The ruling on the field is the receiver possessed the ball while going to the ground. Therefore, it's we a have a completed pass at the 39-yard line. It's a catch. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to one minute and 30 seconds. And we, this will require a 10-second runoff. 10-second runoff. Two reviews on this drive are both ruled catches for the Browns for a total of 35 yards. The one to Perriman and this one to Landry. <laughs> hey, look at Ju Juju Smith-Schuster over in Pittsburgh after, after they got the news that that was called the catch. Well, you know what he's thinking, right? I fumbled. Last week in <laughs> Last New Orleans. Last week in New Orleans, this would be Christmas just a little late, but I like it. Baltimore, this can happen to them two years in a row, can it? At home, having the lead in the fourth quarter. This defense, you want to be the number one defense in the league? It's time for you yep. guys to stand up right now and put this team on your back and say, we're going to close this out. Well, it's a defense, though, that has surrendered 426 yards today, which is about 200 more than they've been given up recently. And they've seen Mayfield moving in on almost 400 yards passing. So they're taking a long time to explain where the judgment came down, why the call was made with Harbaugh, who's seen two now, again, two reviews on this drive go against his Pass. side. 130 on the game clock. Cleveland has elected to have a 10-second runoff. By rule, the clock should be reset to one minute, 20 seconds. That's what Harbaugh was saying. He says, your 10 clock seconds didn't run off. Please reset the game clock. Thank you. Cleveland's going to hold on to its one timeout. And now the Browns. Watch this. This whole drive from here on out, you're going to see Baltimore just like this. One guy back, and you got to decide who's coming and who's not. And here's the snap and the throw, and knocked away without even turning around. Levine denying in Joku. It's a good throw, just perfect defense by Levine putting his hand up. The Cleveland Browns to a man, and we met with them last night. They all repeated the same thing. This is our playoff game. They have a minute 14 to write an incredible final chapter to an unbelievable script for the year. Second and 10. And that is incomplete to Landry. I'm telling you, Jim, Baltimore has utilized, watch the pressure, it's all out pressure again. And just behind them, a missed throw. But if you're gonna look at this, oh, he was open, he missed him. Baltimore's not gonna let the Mahomes situation in Kansas City when they didn't pressure with enough guys on fourth and nine. They're not gonna let Mayfield, he's gonna have to do it throwing it quickly. Here they come racing up. Third down pass. Batted in the air and almost intercepted. And now it's fourth down. Do you go 57-yard field goal? Or do you go ahead and take another offensive snap? Well, if I'm Cleveland, I'm taking another offensive snap unless I have Justin Tucker. We know he could do it. Yes. And they are going to run another play. And forget about I, I, the Hail Mary kick. I would take a timeout if I'm Cleveland. You know, you have plenty of time. It, it's, it's, the time is meaningless here. If you don't love the look as a quarterback, I'm like, I can't block this. I'm telling you, Baltimore's coming after you. You got to get this ball out right away. The whole NFL is watching. A fourth and ten. And here they come. Make this pass. It's intercepted by Mosley. And the Ravens are going to take the division. Hearts are broken in Pittsburgh. Baker, you played amazing.
basics, but this number one defense in the league stood up, put the city of Baltimore on their back with the season on the line, and they blitzed them with everybody. It's Four him. straight plays, and they didn't do that in Kansas City. And I thought if this game came down to that, Baltimore's going down, they're going down swinging. And they stood up today when they needed it. That's a million dollar play, by the way, for Eric Weddle. <laughs> he got a million dollar bonus for a win. It's in his contract, but Mosley, who had a deflection, a little tip on Mayfield's first interception back in the first quarter, he is some player, pro bowler. Last year, they lost on a fourth down play in the last minute. Today, they win it on a fourth down play. Well, just you have to understand, this throw was actually great by Mayfield. Mosley is blitzing the guy who intercepts the ball. But what they do is they say, if you're blocked, he's going to come. And Mayfield sees the guy running. Mosley backs off. And he really had the first down, but Mosley backed off out of there. And did there's it. the Steelers watching the moment their season ended. Right there. Huh. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens go six and one over their last seven games. And who's the team you don't want to run into? You've been saying it's this team for weeks. It's just very difficult to go win a game at the end without something incredible happening. And it's very difficult to handle the run scheme. John Harbaugh. He brought this team back. Deserves a lot of credit. They were left for dead seven weeks ago, weren't they? Yes, they were. And they close out again six and one. They're in the playoffs for the first time since 2014. They take the North, the AFC North, for the first time since 2012. I mean, a nail biter down to a minute to go.